Well, 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 fellas. We finally completed the Shadows of Evil Easter Egg. It was a tough one, I'll be honest. Fair play, Treyarch, but it was no Origins. So in this guide, obviously I'll show you how to do all the steps, but in detail, very clear to follow. And I'll also show you some of my tips on how to do certain steps, and loads more. So let's get to it. So before you start the game, you need four players to complete this easter egg, which is pretty poo. So get all of your best gobble gums ready, like the one that spawns a max ammo or the one that freezes time, etc. And remember fellas, do everything as early as possible and at the end of rounds by leaving zombies. So when you get into the game, you can't start the actual easter egg until you have done all the ritual rooms and open up the pack a punch. And all four players need to get their swords and they all need to be upgraded. If you don't know how to do any of these steps, I will put all of them into the description so you can check them out first and then check this video out. And now you know all of this, the pack a punch and you've got it open and you've upgraded your swords etc, you can begin the easter egg. So for step 1, make sure everyone's got the upgraded swords and leave a zombie at the end of the round and head back up to the spawn area. Head up to the magician's ritual room and on the floor is a lovely book. Hold X on the lovely book and it will start to levitate. That book, for some reason, will spawn a flag in the rift room. So head down to the rift room and the flag should be there. But before you pick it up, make sure each player has a zombie shield, good perks, good pack-a-punch weapons, gobble gums ready, little arnies, and if you can, try and get the wonder weapon, because that'll be flipping sick. So for this step, you need one person to be the flag runner, which was me in this game. So now you can pick up the flag. But when you pick up the flag, it will spawn an infinite spawn of meatballs and flying parasites. So now take the flag to one of the four districts, and that is where the other players will be waiting. Now place your flag into the lightning bolt by holding X. And now the flag is placed, you have to stop the meatballs from destroying the flag. So now I would throw your little annies and have all four players looking in different directions, so the meatballs have not got a chance. But while you are doing this, the Shadow Man will spawn and he will try to destroy the flag too. So as soon as you see him, Shoot the bastard in the face and he will disappear. The Shadow Man will spawn in the air 4-5 to five times when you are charging the flag. And when you have shot him 4-5 to five times, you should hear the flag make a big noise. And when you hear that noise, have the flag runner hold X on the flag. Take that flag to the second lightning bolt in that district and do the same again. Make sure the flag isn't destroyed and shoot the Shadow Man 4-5 to five times again in the second lightning bolt. And then when you've done that and the flag bings again, the flag runner grabs the flag and takes that charged flag up to the ritual room in that district. And all you gotta do is walk up to the ghost and the flag will teleport from your back to the ghost. And the charged energy from the flag will transport from the flag to the ghost. Again keep the meatballs off the flag while this is happening. And then the flag and the ghost will turn into flames. And I bet you're wondering what the fuck happened to that ghost I was. And the ghost will turn into a gatekeeper. That gatekeeper will spawn in the pack punch area next to its gateway. And that is 1 out of 4 charged flags done. So now you have gave the charged flag to the ghost in that district. The infinite spawn of meatballs will stop. And another round will start with a Magra as well. So that is how this step works. There are 4 districts. Each district has 2 lightning bolts in to charge your flag. Charge your flag in the 2 lightning bolts. And then take your charged flag to that district's ritual room. The way we did it was start off with the canal district, did both lightning bolts and gave the flag to the ghost. We then did the waterfront district, did the bolts, gave the flag to the ghost. We then did the footlight district and bossed that. And lastly we did the junction area. So we found it easier to do it in a list. You can only do one around so this should take four rounds. If you need a bit more help with this, here are some tips that I learned from doing this step. If the flag is destroyed by the meatballs like it was here, that isn't the end of the world. Just go grab the flag again and the meatballs will spawn. And when you are charging the flags, I strongly recommend buying the civil protector because they will be a massive help. So now you have gave all four ghosts a charge flag. That is that step done and you can move on to the next step. So step two is killing the shadow man. But before you start this next step, make sure you leave a few zombies at the end of the round. Make sure all players have really powerful weapons like the upgraded ray gun, upgraded dingo. And now make your way down into the Pack-a-Punch room. Have one player looking after the zombies and the other three players will do most of this step. That is the best way to do this. So next to each gateworm should be the gatekeepers. These gatekeepers, like I said earlier in the video, spawned here because you gave the charged flag to each of the four ghosts in the last step. So now all you have to do is wake them up. And no, you're not going to get an air horn and wake them up like that. All you do is press X on each of the gatekeepers 
And when you press X on the last gatekeeper, zombies will spawn so you can kill them or throw little armies because you have the fourth player hoarding the other zombies that you left at the end of the round. And also, you can't leave this room until you've done this step, so please, don't die. Now you will see the gatekeepers wake up and shoot bursts of energy towards the Shadow Man. And while this is happening, make sure the three players are ready in front of the Shadow Man. And the burst of fire from the gatekeepers will destroy the bubble that is around the Shadow Man. And when the bubble disappears, the three players shoot the Shadow Man constantly. He will teleport around the room, so this can be very tricky. But you do have to be very quick doing this or you won't do it. And if you aren't quick enough, you will fail and the Shadow Man will go back into his bubble and more zombies will spawn along with a Magra. If this does happen, kill them off and get everything back under control and then you can press X on all the gatekeepers again and retry. In our game we lost a few players because they died, mainly because we kept failing and we did lose our person who was hoarding the zombies, but somehow we did it without them. After we kept retrying and failing, over time we knew the places the Shadow Man will spawn when he comes out of his bubble. So watch this carefully fellas, and I'm going to show you where the Shadow Man spawns when you shoot him constantly. So firstly activate the gatekeepers, now shoot the Shadow Man in this order. Shoot him in the middle, and then shoot him to the left, and then look to the right and he will spawn there. And now he spawns back in the middle, and now you keep shooting him very rapidly, and he will get further and further back. And when the Shadow Man is caught over the ritual table, you then press X on the table, and that will kill the Shadow Man. And now a lovely giant gate worm will spawn. So if this happens, you have done this step correctly and you can leave the room. Here is that step in a nutshell. Go to the Pack-a-Punch room. Have one player hoarding around the table. Three players activate the gatekeepers. And when the bubble bursts, shoot the Shadow Man as quick as you can until he reaches the ritual table. Have the fourth player who's hoarding around the table press X on the table and the Shadow Man will die. And if you fail, you can retry by activating all the gatekeepers again. After killing the Shadow Man, the next step will start straight after. So let's get into step 3, which is the last step. So as soon as you have killed the Shadow Man, you will notice every 30 seconds, a purple gas will start covering your screen. Every time this purple gas shows up, you have to go find one of these white wisps. These are dotted around the map and these keep you alive basically. Whether you're in human or beast mode for this last step, you need to always walk through a white wisp when the gas shows up. So now make your way up to the main part of the map. And a new round will start, but it won't be zombies, it will be Magras. And the Magras' eyes will change from yellow to purple. These Magras will continue spawning until you complete this step to the easter egg. So the first thing to do is kill a good amount of Magras, because killing the Magras with purple eyes will spawn purple fountains around the map, which means you can go into beast mode. So before we get onto this step, make sure you keep walking into the White Wisps. Don't walk over the purple symbols as well on the floor. So the way this step works is quite tricky, but I'll try to explain it as simple as possible. Each player will have a role to play. You need one player in the junction area in beast mode, which was me, stood waiting underneath a giant gateworm and three gatekeepers. When you go into beast mode now, you will have unlimited beast mode, and you can go into beast mode as many times as you like. You can only get hurt in beast mode by magras, walking over purple symbols, or by getting someone up. If you do revive someone up in beast mode, you will be sent back into human mode and all you do is find another unused fountain. If you can't find any purple fountains, just kill more magras and they will spawn more fountains to use. But like I said, have one player sat waiting here in beast mode. And now, have a second and third player go into beast mode and head to the canal train station and the footlight train station. And inside, you will see this small power box. This power box will need to be zapped later in the set, but all you need to do now is locate the power box and the second and third player can chill. But they still need to watch out for the Magras and find White Wisps when the purple gas shows up. The fourth player will be at the last train station, which is the waterfront district for this example. And that fourth player will need to make sure the train is at that station. And also make sure the train is heading from the waterfront to the canals. The reason why is because we need the train to smash into the giant gateway where player 1 is. And lastly, the fourth player needs to have enough points as well to buy the train. But before the train is bought, the fourth player needs to locate the nearest purple fountain and the power box in the waterfront train station. When both are located, the fourth player buys the train and then finds the purple fountain and gets into beast mode as quickly as possible. He gets up to the waterfront train station and zaps the little power box. And at the same time as the fourth player doing that, the second and third player needs to zap their box as well. So basically, the fourth player buys the train and then you zap the power boxes as quick as possible. 
So now player 2, 3 and 4 have zapped their power boxes before the train reaches the giant gateway. Player 1 will see the train smash into the giant gateway. And when the giant gateway is smashed, player 1 zaps the three gatekeepers as quick as possible. Now, bursts of fire will head into the sky, and if you are taken out of beast mode, that means you have bossed the easter egg, and you will be shown a secret ending cutscene. But before I show you that, I need to let you in on some tips for the last step, for if something does go wrong, then let's say one of your teammates dies like Harry did here. We thought this was the end to the easter egg, but for some reason, about 10 minutes later, after trying to complete this step with three people, Harry randomly spawned back. So what we learned here is that don't give up and your teammates might randomly respawn. And another thing is that if you don't zap your boxes in time, that will be the end of the world because the giant gateway that was smashed by the train will spawn back. So just get the train back to the waterfront and give it another go. And lastly, if you zap the gatekeepers but the gateway still lives, that means you haven't done it and you need to just retry. But if it is done correctly and you followed these steps, when you zap the gatekeepers it should look like this fellas. And now, I will let you enjoy the ending cutscene, but please join me after the cutscene for some after cutscene banter. I'm so sorry, I really don't have time to explain. I have a universe to set right. Thank you, and goodbye. Well fellas, there you go, the easter egg guide and the ending cutscene. And us fellas want to say a big thank you to Harry and Birdie who helped us do this easter egg. Me and Cal are the just gaming fellas so there are just two of us. And we were very worried that we weren't going to find four players to do this easter egg with. But we have, we are very happy, we hope you enjoyed this fellas and learnt a lot. Please like, share, subscribe and comment. Let us know if you have bossed this easter egg, or if this video has helped you. And if you want to send us a question in about certain steps, just pop it into the comment section, we will try help you as best as we can. But don't expect to do this easter egg the first time you try it. Don't underestimate the new rapid fucking zombies that somehow corner you in a circular room. Thanks again fellas, and I will see you for the next easter egg.